I want to be reading it to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show uh, him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said unto them, See uh, ye not all these things, verily or truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars, see that ye be not troubled. Now these things here are going to happen in the tribulation period time. Now what I mean by that is that is a seven year uh, tribulation period which will hit this earth after the Lord's people, the Christians, have been taken to be forever with himself. We commonly call it the rapture of the church or the translation of the church. So we need to understand this is what we're waiting for now. This is the next prophetic thing that will happen really in God's uh, calendar as it were, in God's program the rapture of the church. Now the believers will be taken away from this world. And what's going to happen then is going to, there's going to be a seven year tribulation period upon the earth, commonly known as Jacob's trouble. Now it's mainly focused upon the, uh, the Jews as a nation. It's basically um, because of their rejection of their Messiah. They didn't recognize the Lord Jesus Christ for who he really is, their Messiah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, he is the King of the Jews. He is the King of Kings, I said, and the Lord of Lords. No one greater than him. And he is going to rule and reign in righteousness for all eternity eventually. But that's not just now. We need to understand we're waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the air as I said, we call it the rapture of the church, and he's going to take his people out of this world. And then your um, chance of salvation is over. If you've heard the message and rejected it and understood it, you will not have any more opportunity. God is going to send you a strong delusion that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's found in the book of Thessalonians, if you want to look that up. But the point is this, the whole urgency of the matter is this. You need to be saved and you need to be saved now. As you listen to this message right now, you need to come to Christ for your salvation. You need to understand you cannot save yourself. And when we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. We need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary. See, it cost God everything to bring us salvation. He had to spare his son from his side. And the Lord Jesus Christ was, was born of that virgin. Uh, that had to take place because he is perfect. Uh, there was no interference of man here. Joseph was not the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The father in heaven is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. But is he your savior? Remember, these things will happen in the tribulation period. It's not talking about what we're seeing uh, over here in wherever that war is over there, you know, Ukraine and Russia and all those sort of places. It's not talking about that. It's talking about a time that there's going to be uh, wars and rumours of wars. So, uh, yes, this is only just a, a foreshadowing of really what's going to happen. But I implore you not to be left behind. The Lord Jesus Christ is returning soon. Are you saved? Are you a child of God? The Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith 
in Christ Jesus. So you need forgiveness for your sins and you need it now, urgently. If you were to die right now, where would you be? Now it's either going to be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or it's going to be down in hell. Now what will it be for you? If you die without Christ, you'll be in hell. You can't make it any plainer than that and I dare not beat around the bush when I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a dangerous situation you're in. You're condemned already before God because of your sins. You need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Have your sins been forgiven? Are you at peace with God? You know, the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 1, uh, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do you need to do? Come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yes, so it says here, uh, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places or in different places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Remember I, um, I said that this period of time is called Jacob's trouble. It's like a time of sorrow for the uh, Jews especially, but for the whole world. They'll, be all, they'll all be affected. Uh, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and ye, sorry, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This is speaking primarily to the Jews who are saved, to the Jewish believers who are on earth at this particular time. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. For many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Talking about the physical salvation here, the preservation of their bodies. It's not talking about eternal salvation here. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, that is, the last three and a half years is of the seven year period is called the great tribulation, um, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. There won't be a time that can be remembered that's so bad. Last three and a half years of the seven year tribulation period. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. In other words, everyone would be wiped out, the whole world, ever, there would be no, uh, no one left upon the earth if it was only, um, you know, it's only for three and a half years. But for the elect's sake, that is those who were saved during the tribulation period, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, and note that language, if it were possible, in other words it's not possible, um, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, 
Go not forth, behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is his second coming. Uh, visible, physical, visible coming to the earth. It's not the rapture, it's something different. It happens after the rapture, after the tribulation period. Um, yes, and he shall uh, send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, that is, those who were saved during the tribulation period. This is another group, it's not the rapture, as I said. Um, from the four winds, uh, his elect, from the four winds of, from the four winds, sorry, and from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh or near. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily or truly I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. That is the second coming of the Lord. No one knows when he's going to come again in power and great glory. No man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. There is the worldwide flood in Noah's day, took them all away. They were drowned because they did not believe the warning that Noah was given them, that giving them that judgment was coming. It was going to be a worldwide flood and they didn't believe it. They thought he was an idiot. And that's okay. You know, it's okay if you think I'm an idiot. I don't care. I'm concerned about your soul. You have a soul that needs to be saved and it needs to be saved now before it's forever and eternally too late. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the, other, uh, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or permitted or allowed his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Yes, he's coming, and he's coming soon. As I said, what we're waiting for, the believers are waiting for the time of the translation of the church. In other words, the believers are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, the dead in, uh, the then in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then wherefore comfort one another with these words. But it's no comfort for you if you'll, if you'll be left behind, because you are personally responsible before God now. You have heard the message of salvation. We cannot save ourselves. We've got to come to Christ to be saved. What you need to do is come in repentance toward God, as I said, acknowledge that you are a sinner before the God of heaven and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. As I often say, that would be the best day of your entire life today if you were to trust Christ, if you were to put your faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. And uh, yes, hope you have a great day.